Okay. Um, so over the course of the next uh, few days, like we're going to spend some time multiplying, dividing radicals. But when then, then when you get back, we're going to review kind of some of those aspects of, of simplifying radicals. And we're going to move into solving equations and, and doing the quadratic formula and stuff. And you'll be able to test on that. It's a short unit. But uh, the next three days, we're going to kind of work on uh, some, oh, should we say, college prep test kind of stuff and uh, reviewing kind of your, uh, some of your topics throughout the year. And we'll, we'll take it, uh, hopefully, at a nice, easy pace. But um, do you have some, some big tests coming up in your other classes? AP Bio? Nothing? Okay. Uh, well, good for you. Um, we might be getting a snowstorm on Thursday. So don't know for sure how that's going to turn out, but we will see what's going on. So what? Thursday, what? Like Wednesday night into Thursday day. What? Why? We don't want to do our interview. Oh, that's right. You don't want to do real life application stuff. Bro, not the job you want for the rest of your life. Bra, bra. What? Okay, all right. All righty, Friday. Let's review the perfect squares. One squared is one. Two squared is four. Three squared is nine. Sixteen. 25, 36, 49er, 64, 81, 100, 121, 141, 169. Now here's where people tend to forget. What'd you say? It is 196. It is 225, and it is 256. Nicely done. So those are some good perfect squares to try to keep in mind. You have uh, learned how to simplify um, radicals, and you have learned how to add and subtract. Just a review from yesterday. Can I subtract these? What up, dog? No packet. Oh. <laughs> All right, 2 roots of 7 minus 5 roots of 7. Can you subtract those, yes or no? Yeah. Yes, and you get negative 3 roots of 7 because the radicand is the same. But if the radicand is not the same, then you have to simplify them first. So we do 3 roots of 18 plus 4 roots of 50. I can simplify the root of 18, and I can simplify the root of 50. The root of 18 simplifies to 9 times 2. The 2 is an indication that I probably have a 2 over here. 50 simplifies to 25 and 2. Sometimes people wonder what to do with these front numbers. The square root of 9 is, and that's times 3 gives you 9 roots of 2. The square root of 25 is, times 4 is 20 roots of 2. And so we have 9 roots of 2 plus 20 roots of 2. Now the radicand is the same, so we can add them to get 29 roots of 2. This is the type of problem you'll have to be able to do on your test, okay? So make sure that you know how to add and subtract radicals. That was your assignment yesterday, okay? All right, so we move on to multiplying and dividing radicals. In order for a radical to be simplified, it must have all perfect squares removed and the denominator must be rational.
what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you an example of a few radicals that are simplified and a few radicals that are not simplified. Here's some that are simplified. The square root of 6. Although you can break it into the square root of 2 and the square root of 3, there's no perfect square that divides evenly. Here's another radical that's simplified. Square root of 10 all over 2. Notice that this is a fraction, but all perfect squares are removed from 10, and the bottom is a rational number. A rational number means a number that can be expressed as a fraction. Okay, Irrational would be like square root of 6. You can't have the square root of 6 in the denominator. Here's another example. Suppose you had 4 minus the root of 3 all over 8. That is also simplified. You tell me why the next one is not simplified. Square root of 18. Why is that not simplified? So you could take out a perfect square, which would be 9. So we would have work to do in that situation. 5 over the square root of 2. Why is that not simplified? The bottom is not rational. The square root of 2 is not a rational number. You can't have a square root in the denominator. So that's not allowed. Four minus the root of two hundred over one minus the root of three. Square root of two hundred, that can be simplified, can it? And you have a square root in the denominator. So those are all examples that are not simplified. Now we're not going to do the really difficult ones, but we are going to focus on the easy ones. And here's something that you are allowed to do. So simplify the following radicals. When you see a square root of a fraction, you can take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. So we say that this is currently not simplified because 4 is a perfect square and 9 is a perfect square, and you have to make sure you don't have that square root in the denominator. So square of the top is 2, square of the bottom is 3. That's my answer. What will be the square root of 25 over 49? Square of the top is 5, square of the bottom is 9. Hey, whoops, 7, sorry. Example 3, square root of 1 is 1. And square root of 256 is... 16. So this is 1 16th. Right now, you're like, hey, Mr. Gantz, this is super easy. Yes, it is. Example 4. Can I take the square root of 6? No. So you just have to leave it as a square root of 6. Can you take the square root of 25? And I get 5. Is that simplified? Yes. You can't remove a perfect square, and the bottom is rational. So we are good to go. Next one, I can't take the square of the top, so I get the root of 2, and the square of the bottom is 7. Notice the negative sign. Don't worry about it. We just attach a negative. You can either have the negative out front, or you can put it on top, or you can put it on the bottom. But either way, just one negative. Morgan, where would you like to put the negative? We'll let you decide. Just make sure you just use one negative. Next one again, I have the square root of 7 over 10. Okay. Flip it over. All right, we're going to get just a little bit more tricky here. I have the square root of 2 over the square root of 3. Watch what happens. I get the square root of 2 over the root of 3. Can I leave my answer like that? Why? I have an irrational denominator. Do you remember from your previous class is what you did when you had an irrational denominator? <coughs> Multiply by 1. Now, there's lots of ways to express 1, isn't there? 1 could be 10 over 10. 1 can be 1 over 1. 1 can be pi over pi. 
in this situation, we're going to multiply by the root of 3 over the root of 3. And when you multiply two radicals together, the root of 2 times the root of 3, anybody know, is the root of 6. Watch what happens in the bottom. This is an operation that you need to get used to. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. So when you take a root and multiply it by itself, the root just goes away. So just to make sure everybody understands, what would be the root of 7 times the root of 7? 7, right? See how that works? I'm very, very sorry. So anytime that happens, all you need to do is just say it's that number. So root of 6 over 3 is your final answer. Number eight, why is that not simplified? Root of two in the denominator, so I multiply top and bottom by. <coughs> root of two over the root of two. What do you get in the top? The root of ten. In the bottom, you just get two. Notice how now the denominator is rationalized, and the numerator, all perfect squares are removed. I'm going to do example nine two different ways. The first way I'm going to do it is right now, what, how would you start this? You'd multiply the top and bottom by root of six. And what do you get in the top? The root of 18 and the bottom you just have six. Can I simplify the square root of 18? Yes. What's the perfect square you can take out of the root of 18? So I reduce this to the square root of 9 times the square root of 2 all over 6. The square root of 9 is, so I have 3 roots of 2 over 6. Can you reduce 3 over 6? To one half, so you get the square root of two over two, which is your final answer. A little bit more involved, huh? Can I show you a second way of doing it? You can do it whichever way you want, but look at in this situation, I have the square root of three. I'm going to divide it by, I'm going to rewrite square root of six as the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. Now, I know that neither one of those is a perfect square, but it does allow me to cancel off the root of 3s. You see that? So I'm left with 1 over the root of 2. Can I leave it as 1 over the root of 2? Nope, you have a square root in the denominator. So you multiply the top and bottom by, root of 2, root of 2, and I get the root of 2 over 2. So either way, you come up with the same result. You have two ways. You can either multiply by the root of 6 right away, or you can cancel off the root of 3 and rationalize from there. I don't have that option for example 10. Nothing divides evenly into 10 and the root of 3, so I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by the root of 3. What do you get in the top? 6 roots of 30 over 3. Is there a perfect square that divides evenly into the root of 30? Nope, nothing goes in, does it? But 6 divided by 3 is... 2. So I have 2 roots of 30. I have two problems left. 
Nothing divides evenly into the 7 and the 2. I'm just going to multiply top and bottom by the root of 2. What do we get in the top? 8 roots of 14 over 2. Can I simplify that fraction? 8 over 2 divides to 4 roots of 14. For our last example, then I'll let you guys go to work. Um, I'd like you to look at example 12, and notice we have a square root of 35 in the denominator. That's a big number, isn't it? And here's what I'm worried about. I'm worried that when I multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 35, I'm going to get the square root of 350. Do you see that? I don't like to reduce the square root of 350. That's a really big number. So I'm going to show you a way to avoid that, and it's based off of what we just did. What number divides evenly into both 10 and 35? 5. So watch how I'll do this to try to make it more manageable. Negative 4 times the root of 5 times the root of 2 over the root of 5 times the root of 7. And what's going to happen? Yeah, the root of 5's cancel. So now you get negative 4 roots of 2 over the root of 7. I've just rewritten the problem so that it's easier to deal with. I don't mind working with that now. So now I will multiply the top and bottom by the root of 7. And I get negative 4 roots of 14 over 7. Notice the root of 14 is simplified. There's no perfect squares you can extract. And notice that the denominator is rational. So that's my final answer. I like that way a lot better than simplifying the square root of 350. That, that makes my brain hurt, right? And we don't want our brains to hurt, especially when we have important job interviews coming up. Facts. That's what they say these days. FAQ, FAQS. Facts. JC, where's the glasses today? I did too. We're twinning. 